could relate to some of this. Maybe some of the psychosexual or psychosocial conflicts you're relating to and saying, hey, maybe that's why I have that hang up. Or maybe with the cognitive uh, patterns where you're thinking, oh, I remember doing this or I remember following that. Or maybe with the attachments, you're starting to feel connection to sort of what type of relationships you form. But as we continue on to adult adolescence, we're going to see what cards come up next. And we have four cards that appear here. The first of them is really going to be about our physical development. So much happens in adolescence about our physical development in terms of puberty. Puberty results in the biggest growth spurt we'll have aside from an infancy. We start to put on muscle mass, we start to put on fat, we start to grow bones and grow tall. In addition, we develop secondary sex characteristics. This is the development of breasts or the development of body hair or the lowering of one's voice. And for people with uteruses, they may develop menarche. Menarche is the onset of the first menstrual period. And this on average happens around 11 and a half years of age. Or people with scrotums and penises might develop semenarche. This is the first ejaculation. It often happens at night as a wet dream. And on average, it often happens around 13 and a half years of age. So puberty is a major event. Now something else that happens from puberty is it starts our sex drives and starts our development as a sexual being. Now this is where we hit Freud's last stage of psychosexual development called the genital stage. And this is really where one gets an idea of their own sexuality. If they're attracted to people, what genders they're attracted to, what they think about sex, is sex taboo and dirty and shameful or is sex healthy and fine as long as there's consent and people are emotionally ready for it. And so what we find here is your sex education really plays a major role in your sexual identity at this stage. If you go to, uh, if the sex education you received was very shameful and absence focused, and you might have the sense that sex is dirty and you might only be able to um, engage in sexual activity if you let your inhibitions go. So we might find people that prefer to drink before they engage in sex. Or if your sex ed was much more sex positive and talked about consent and emotional bonding, then that's going to give you a bit of a different perspective. We also know this can really impact in terms of how you feel towards sexual minorities and if you feel comfortable exploring your sexuality in that way, or how you feel about the emotional commitment. Do you require a strong emotional commitment for sexual activity or do you prefer more casual interactions? In addition to the psychosexual development, Eric Erickson also says this is a major stage of identity construction, not just your sexual identities, but all things identity. What do you want to do for a job? What do you want to do for hobbies? What's your political identity? Where do you see yourself? Are you a jock, a nerd, a band geek? Where do you fit in the big pictures? And he believed that adolescence was the time we began to explore that. And finally, in cognitive development, there are some major growths. We've now reached Jean Piaget's final stage of cognitive development, and this was called the formal operational development stage. And this is when we were thought to be able to have abstract reasoning. So this is the idea that not only can you do math operations in your head, but now you can visualize really complicated engineering or physics problems. You can visualize in your head and understand complicated chess moves. Or you can do hypothetical thinking. You can think of something that's ridiculous, like where would you put a third eye? Or what would it be like if pigs could fly? Or what would you do if a feather could break glass? And we can do deductive reasoning. This is the idea if you're trying to solve a major problem, you don't just have to do it randomly. You can do it systemically and rule out things in a very rational way. However, although we're really smart at this stage, our cognitions in adolescence are not the same as they are in middle adulthood. And that's because of adolescent egocentrism. This is the idea that adolescents fall victim to the imaginary audience illusion. And this happened even before social media. And so what this is, is they believe other people are constantly watching them. They get a stain on their shirt or the zit on their face. They feel that's the first thing someone's gonna see when they walk in a room. And they feel very preoccupied with it that other people are gonna judge them. And they also fall victim to the importance illusion, which is the idea they feel like they're going to be famous someday, or they're going to win the lottery, or they're going to be a famous actor or a writer, or they're going to have a dream house with a mansion. Now, again, this is also heightened in the ages of social media, where people feel they have easy access to influencers and likes can really shape this, but it's always been there. And finally, there's the invincibility illusion. This is the idea that adolescents believe nothing bad is going to happen to them. They can go skydiving or jumping off rocks or racing motorcycles or drinking and driving, and they'll be okay. And only when something bad happens, they say, I can't believe this happened to me. 
because their sense of identity didn't account for the fact that they might get cancer or they might get in a car accident or they might get pregnant as a teen. And so they think that there is this extra layer of invincibility. Adults can still have this, but it tends to be much more heightened in adolescence.